guys ever look at a Kotaku article and you just think like what what went through that person's mind when they wrote this article? Like what like what what could have really made you uh think that this was going to be a great article to write? And really the show media websites are just going off lately. Like they are they are really providing me some good stuff to talk about. I got to say, they're providing me with some good content for you guys for us to laugh at because we have another example of an amazing show media article that I haven't had the pleasure to dive into yet because I wanted to see live for you guys what they were going to say. And this one comes for us again from good old Kotaku where it says, "A uh, Dragon Age Inquisition's most disappointing character shows the limitations of Dragon Age. We really need to talk about how marginalized races are handled in BioWare's RPG. This was this was written by CC Zhang. CC Zhang, okay? So I've done a few videos on CC Zhang before, and they are always talking about marginalized races. They're always talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Because again, this is a Kotaku article. If you came here expecting video game news, <laughs> I, I got a surprise for you. It ain't about video games. <laughs> It's never it's never about video games. It's always about identity politics within the video games. But still, it is quite funny. So we are going to go through this article together and let's see what CC Zhang has to say. It says, I like the Iron Bull a lot. I'd get a drink with a guy like him in real life. Yeah, I'm sure you would. We'd get to each other's backs if anyone was giving shit to either of us, which is why I can't stop thinking about how badly his story arc concluded in the action RPG Dragon Age Inquisition and why I've been revisiting the way it lines up with how poorly marginalized cultures are treated in Bioware's sprawling series. My God, can you imagine? Can you imagine playing this game, right? You're playing this game, you're enjoying yourself, or so you say, and... The next thing that pops up in your head after the video game ends or when this particular character arc ends, instead of talking about the character arc itself and how maybe bad it was and you didn't enjoy it for what it was, uh, you want to bring this and tie this into real life identity politics somehow, some way. To think that there's people out there, and there's a lot of them, who are on the video game sector and they are making reviews and they're writing articles like, and they really, really, really want to be in a job in politics. That's what they really want. They want to write for something like, you know, New York Times or something along those lines. Like they want they want to write for CNN, they want to write for Fox News. They want to write for obviously they want to write for something that's politically based. But they they can't get the job. They can't get the job. So they got to get the job somewhere somehow and they choose video games because with video games, you can never not do enough virtue signaling. That's that's the problem with video games and that's the problem with the culture that we're in right now. So it says the Iron Bull is a companion who shows up to offer aid to your character's army early on when it's still just a small peacekeeping force before it becomes a robust geopolitical entity. He immediately explains that he's a spy from the hostile nation of Parvalin based on the Mongol horde and that his bosses have mutual interests with you. See, there's an effed up hole in the sky. Nobody knows how it happened, but it's spawning monsters and spewing green lightning. The religious people are freaking out. Nobody seems to be in charge of fixing the thing and the only way to seal it is by using a glowing seal on your hand. That's how you end up in charge of paramilitary force sponsored by the Andrasian Church because of your ongoing heroics against the biggest natural disaster this world has ever faced. Potential allies from other countries roll up to see how they can help. That includes a normally hostile Kanari, who are a religious group that I've been feuding with for most of Dragon Age 2. They, uh, they value conformity at all costs, host a powerful military, and have expansionist tendencies. Most residents of the Thetis continent don't appreciate being invaded, or horned beings who don't worship their lord and savior. So for the first time in Dragon Age history, the the player gets to work with the mysterious dogmatic Kunari as equals. I was excited for Iron Bull to pave the way for international friendship, even if it was by way of military alliance. See, his story reminds me a lot of my own. Growing up Chinese in the U.S. was a fraught ordeal. Kids would assume that your people were the reason why all the American jobs were disappearing. White people would freak out if our national government sneezed in any direction. And I get it. People feel small and impotent in the face of geopolitical forces beyond their control. It's easier to project that nasty crap onto a human being, and they do, both in theaters and in real life. Well, can you really blame them, though? Because because there is so much, and, and again, we see this all the time, there is so much examples of people being passed over, white people being passed over for jobs, not because they didn't qualify, because there's people out there who qualify less, but since they happen to check off a box, they get hired first. Don't say it doesn't happen, because it does happen, and it happens quite often, and it's happening more often than ever before, especially in the entertainment space. If you are a white person, and you are an actor or actress, I feel bad for you, because unless you are gay, or unless you're perfectly fine just playing evil roles, or a stupid ditzy role, or anything that fits the tropes that are deemed okay for white people to play, 
You're not going to get anything, dude. You're not going to get... Just look at Disney. Disney's race swapping everything that used to be white into black. Why? Because it's just... It's lazy. It's the easiest thing to do to get virtue signaling points. They're going to do what they're going to do regardless of whatever... Regardless of however anybody else feels. Because apparently... Uh, for people who say that characters don't matter and uh, fictional characters don't matter and that them being white has no basis to the story, it's interesting that it doesn't matter, but that they always matter just enough for you to have to see yourself in it. You know, you, you keep saying, oh, representation is key. We need to see ourselves. And then you go off and you want to race swap everything so you can see yourself in characters that supposedly don't matter. It's a very interesting take to have. So but let's just keep reading. It says, Iron Bull isn't just an active adherent to the Kuhn. Uh, here's a secret policeman for the Kunari uh, nation of the Parvalin. Despite his membership in a police force that engages in assassination and religious re-education, Iron Bull tries to carve out a life outside of fulfilling his duties. He believes that the Kuhn is the best political system, but he doesn't want holy war. He also enjoys drinking and having the fun times despite their religious stigma against hedonism. I feel kinship with him for this, as I too cherry pick what I like being about Chinese. I'd also rather talk about anime than the Communist Party. But most strangers don't care what I believe. Like Bull, I have to be armed with an icebreaker for every conversation. We are considered threats until proven otherwise. How? How are you considered a threat? Seriously, in today's modern era with the United States of America, how are you considered a threat? How do like nobody nobody looks at you like you're any sort of way? I, I would almost guarantee you you act like you go through life walking on eggshells when in most part most people probably just ignore you. And that's the thing. You want to make it seem like it's something grander than it actually is. I would almost guarantee most people ignore CC Zhang in public. It's not like people are pointing, oh my God, look, a Chinese person. I wonder if he came from the Communist Party. Like, no, nobody's doing that. So I don't know why these people try to make their lives uh, seem so much worse than they actually are. It says, despite the stigma, I like that Bull sticks to his religion and that he's willing to risk his life for it. Why shouldn't he? Human Templars fight and die for Androsianism all the time, and it doesn't mean that they're ev evil zealots. My friendship with him on my first run was special because I was playing as a member of his race, albeit one who had never been born into the culture of Ashoth. Our lives were different, but we both knew what it was like to be assumed to be a monster before man. Shut the fuck up. Oh, man, this guy is so... He's so annoying. <laughs> He's so annoying because he's he's honestly trying to play. He's trying to play it up as if his life is just so terrible being a Chinese man in the United States. So let's skip a little ahead of the article and see what he has to say because this guy is super long-winded. It says, take Varric, for example. He's been a companion in two whole Dragon Age games, and his character revolves around how much better off he is for never having experienced proper dwarven culture like his brother did. Come on, dude. Aren't you even the slightest bit curious about the intergenerational trauma that shaped your entire family? Apparently not. Making peace with family history and letting go of it is one thing, but Varric doesn't even care to interrogate his non-human background. I always feel conflicted when I see fans fawning over him. He's not a dwarfy character. He's successful because his rejection of his heritage makes him non-threatening, like a fantasy model minority. Would he still be so beloved if he held strong opinions about the dwarven caste system, or if he cared for the sprawling spires where his family resided for generations? Yeah, he probably would. He probably would. That's the whole point. He probably would. But the thing is, these characters are made not with their diversity in mind, they're made with what they bring to the table and what they bring to the actual story. You're looking at it through the eyes of diversity. And when you do that, it makes the character seem so basic. And you try to say, oh, well, if the character focused on his diversity, he probably wouldn't be as loved as he is today. It's like, no, that's not the case. He would still be loved uh, because he is made without the eyes of diversity. He is made, simply put, to help the story grow. That's his whole purpose to the actual story. So when you have people like CC Zhang look at video games, unfortunately, and try to make it all about diversity, equity, inclusion, they start to tear apart the game, which unfortunately for them makes them miss out on the magic of what makes the game so special in the first place. So hopefully CC Zhang can uh, go back to having fun with video games instead of being so guilty about his own race that he feels like he's being targeted every day in the United States of America. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.